Welcome to lecture number eight, GPS tracking, search warrants, and United States versus Jones. On January 23rd, 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court announced its much-awaited decision in United States v. Jones. The decision was expected to provide clarity and guidance as to the permissible use of GPS surveillance in the context of the Fourth Amendment prohibition against unreasonable searches and seizures. Different lower courts had reached different results on the question of whether the use of a GPS tracking device required a warrant. While it resolved the specific issue before the court, what constitutional tests and standards will be applied in future GPS cases was left uncertain. Here are the facts. Antoine Jones was suspected of dealing drugs from his nightclub in Washington, D.C., and conspiring to distribute drugs from a stash house in Maryland. Police set up cameras, monitored his phone, and installed a GPS tracking device on his car, which broadcast the car's location every seven seconds. The police obtained a warrant to install the GPS device, but it had expired the day before the device was installed. Police monitored his car for 28 days, which, when combined with cell phone records, showed his trips to the stash house and his coordination with his co-conspirators. The trial court, over defendant's objection, admitted into evidence the GPS data, which, when combined with the cell phone records, painted a clear picture that supported a conclusion that Jones was involved in drug trafficking. Jones was subsequently convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The issue on appeal was whether the government violated the Fourth Amendment by tracking Jones's movements 24 hours a day for four weeks with a GPS device installed on his vehicle without a valid warrant. The government argued there was no search within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment because a person who is traveling on public streets has no quote, reasonable expectation of privacy, end of quote, in his movements from one place to another. The government relied on the 1983 Supreme Court decision in U.S. v. Knotts, which applied the CATS reasonable expectation of privacy test and upheld the warrantless monitoring of a car on public streets using a secretly installed radio beeper. The Court of Appeals rejected the government's argument and held that the Knotts decision was not controlling because the surveillance of Jones continued over a period of a month and that prolonged surveillance will reveal information different from the information revealed by short-term surveillance. The court held that society recognizes as reasonable an expectation of privacy of one's movements over the course of a month and the use of a GPS device defeated that expectation. The Court of Appeals reversed Jones's conviction. Faced with a broad ruling that long-term surveillance required a warrant, the government appealed and the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case. The government sought a broad ruling that GPS tracking does not constitute a Fourth Amendment search because it only collects information disclosed to the public. Numerous amici requested a range of rulings, including a request for the court to establish a bright-line rule that law enforcement must always obtain a warrant for any GPS surveillance longer than 24 hours. Another requested a broad ruling requiring a warrant whenever high-tech methods are used. And there was also a request to reverse the circuit court ruling on the grounds that there was a trespass of Jones by attaching the GPS device to his private property, and that the Fourth Amendment pre prevents unreasonable trespasses as well as protecting reasonable expectations of privacy. All nine of the justices agreed the government's conduct in the case constituted a Fourth Amendment search, but for different reasons. Thus, while the circuit court's decision was upheld, the future consequences of the decision are unclear. Two theories were advanced, each garnering the vote of five justices. 
Justice Scalia authored the majority opinion. He did not apply the Katz test, but said the government's conduct constituted a trespass onto persons, houses, and effects. In this instance, Jones's car. This trespass was to obtain information, and such a physical intrusion would have been considered a search within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment when it was adopted. Thus, under the Scalia view and the majority opinion, an installation of a GPS device is a search, but the opinion does not say a warrant is required under all circumstances. For example, under this view, a device could be installed on a suspect's car before the suspect acquires the car because he does not yet have a property right. According to the Scalia opinion, the reasonable expectation of privacy test is only applicable when there is no trespass. Justice Alito authored a concurring opinion joined by four justices. This opinion said Katz did away with the trespass rule and opined that the Katz test is the only standard. Alito said the definition of when a search occurs and what is a reasonable expectation of privacy is case-specific and oftentimes involves difficult line drawing. Congress can define expectations of privacy, but unfortunately has chosen not to do so. In essence, the Alito view is that when the government, through surveillance over time, learns something really invasive about a person, a search has occurred. Justice Sotomayor, while joining the majority, wrote a separate occurrence only for herself and said the question of when a search occurs should be decided in the context of new technologies and the aggregation of information by the government. Sotomayor said, and I quote, I would ask whether people reasonably expect that their movements will be recorded and aggregated in a manner that enables the government to ascertain, more or less at will, their political and religious beliefs, sexual habits, and so on, end of quote. Sotomayor also said it may be necessary to reconsider the Fourth Amendment tests used in the future, specifically re-examining the concept that a person has no reasonable expectation of privacy in information voluntarily disclosed to a third party, such as an Internet service provider of a cell phone carrier. So, where do things now stand? The government certainly did not get what it wanted, freedom to use GPS surveillance of the highways without Fourth Amendment constraints. Privacy advocates did not get what they had hoped for, a broad constitutional ruling which restricted government surveillance. Instead, we ended up with a very narrow ruling, which will require the court to continue to flesh out the interplay between the Fourth Amendment and new technologies. There are many unanswered questions, such as, does a passenger in a car have standing to challenge information gained through a GPS device? Is a search implicated whenever the police employ sophisticated technology to monitor citizens? Will the increased availability to the public of new technologies change the reasonableness assessment? And finally, what is the impact of the Jones case on whether the government needs a search warrant to access cell phone records or emails? We will continue to explore the issues surrounding surveillance in next week's lecture, which will address the impending use of unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly referred to as drones.